Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Dr. Murthy, welcome. The Maternal Infant and Early Childhood Home Visiting Program is an evidence-based program so. that supports pregnant women and young families. This multi-year support is critical to having young people start off uh, their lives healthier and better prepared for early childhood learning. It also helps parents, including through mental health screenings and connecting to community-based resources. So my question is, how can we further support this program so that more young people are starting off on a strong footing and young parents, including pregnant and, pa and parenting foster youth, have an additional means of support? Well, Senator, I appreciate the question, and I do agree that these early intervention programs, especially that support families, uh, are absolutely essential. We have uh, more and more evidence that these kind of programs make a big difference, not just in the immediate setting, but for years down the line. Uh, and anything that I can do to, to work with you to support uh, these kind of efforts, I would be happy to do. I, I find that one of the challenges, Senator, is even when the programs are funded, that many communities don't know about them, uh, and so they don't avail themselves uh, of the funds, or they don't know what technical assistance is available to them to actually implement those programs. Um, but this is these are incredibly important programs that help to reduce the risk of mental health challenges. Well, I, wel I welcome your support in the effort. McVeigh, as the program is known, uh, is uh, very successful, evidence-based, and so uh, we need to have advocates within the administration to uh, expand its opportunities. I, I want to take advantage of uh, my colleague, Senator Cortez Masto, being here. Uh, I introduced the Pursuing Equity and Mental Health Act along with Senator Cortez Mastos and Senator Booker because communities of color continue to disproportionately lack, uh, or suffer, I should say, from the lack of access to mental health services and supports. Do, do you support the need for targeted investments into minority communities that support access to culturally competent care? Senator, thank you for raising that. Mental health equity is and continues to be a profound challenge for our country. I do think we need to take a targeted approach here in the sense of surging resources uh, to communities that have been hard hit. The, the challenge that many of our communities of color have had is, uh, number one, from a workforce perspective, we don't have adequate representation of racial and ethnic minorities in our workforce. Uh, and that makes it more challenging when it comes to trust, uh, which is such an important component of getting good mental health care. But we also know that access has been a profound challenge uh, for many uh, of these communities. And we've got to make sure that we're uh, doing more than we are now to make sure that both virtual care and in-person care are available. Finally, Senator, as a member of uh, a racial and ethnic minority community, I will tell you that many of our communities struggle with stigma around a mental illness. Uh, it may come in different shapes and flavors, but that stigma is there in many of our communities, prevents us from coming forward, which is, again, why role models uh, are so incredibly helpful. I, I, I strongly agree. I want to highlight the pandemic's impact on children from minority communities has been particularly harsh. Mm -hmm. And I want to take a moment to look at the impact on Latino communities in particular for a few moments. One survey found that 29% of Hispanic households with children have experienced three or more hardships during the pandemic, compared to around half of that for non-Hispanic white households with children. At the same time, Latino children were far more likely to experience the death of a primary caregiver during the pandemic and more likely to contract the virus and be hospitalized themselves. These experiences were compounded by other pre-existing disparities among Latino children, um, including higher uninsured rates and lower access to mental health services and supports. So I'm, I look forward to working with you as to specific policies uh, necessary to help advance mental health equity um, and begin to close some of the racial disparities that preceded and have been exacerbated by COVID-19. And uh, can I get your commitment to work with us in that? Senator, I would be happy to work with you on this issue. And then finally, you, you talked about representation. You know, the Minority Fellowship Program, I think, is a critical component of this legislation. Uh, what else can we do to support the development of minority mental health providers uh, in the pipeline? Well, Senator, I think we can work with training institutions to be more uh, proactive and aggressive in their recruitment of candidates from minority communities. I also think we have to invest upstream, even before we're talking about admission uh, to a medical school or a nursing school. 
Um, how are we getting young people in minority communities interested in the healthcare professions at an early age when they're in grade school, uh, when they're in college? Uh, these are places where I think we have to focus, plant that seed early, and then make sure opportunity uh, is available uh, when they get to the stage of entering a training program. Well, thank you. I look forward to working with you in all these different aspects. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to working.